everyone welcome to another video this time we are going to be dipping into lost ocean by johanna bassford now this page i always think is rather pretty but extremely daunting we've got this wallpaper type design and we have a sort of repeating pattern just had a look at it myself <clears throat> having already completed it once before we have a fish swimming across here so this is the same fish design all the way across here we have a jellyfish design here and a seahorse design here and we just have those three elements on the page which obviously repeat across i thought it'd be fun to colour one of each so make three videos one of each of these and uh, show you how I would approach it and then it might make it hopefully slightly less daunting for you um, when you have a go at the page um, so today we're going to start with the fish we're actually this one has got a little pocket watch on it which the other ones haven't I just realised I don't think I've switched my lamp on it's going to adjust and go a bit weird for a minute. So that's the jellyfish. We're going to do the fish. Where is he? Let's get him into shot. Oh, excuse me. I just have a shifty round. Now you can see he's still quite um, detailed. There we go. Even when I'm zoomed in quite closely. But there are ways to get over that and make it a little simpler to tackle. The first thing is to think about doing a limited colour scheme, which is exactly what I'm going to do. So I'm only going to do a very small amount of colours um, on each item. So I will do all the leaves and things in one green set of greens, all the sort of corally bits in another set of colours and the fish in one set of colours. So it's not going to be hugely complex. And I think hopefully that will help us to uh, tackle this page and make it nice and easy. So I'm going to start, I saw someone the other day had coloured a fish with brown, orange and yellow. I thought it looked really pretty. So I want to have a go myself at doing that. So we shall, it's a quite a different way of colouring. I'm going to be sharpening my pencils quite a lot. Um, because um, obviously this is a complex page so it may not be quite such a relaxing sounding video because I will be using my lovely um, Dow 133 sharpener I think it's 133 yeah which I was gifted recently and I thought I'm gonna start this is the espresso brown I'm just gonna start detailing I thought I had the best sharpeners in the world, <laughs> to put it lightly. No, <laughs> no I didn't. This is absolutely amazing. So uh, thank you Francis who sent me this. It, it's just brilliant. So I'm going to do, um, I'm, I'm thinking this through a little bit as I go. I'm thinking maybe, uh, maybe I'll take that brown all the way along the edge of the fin like that you see I'm going to ignore all these little lines and details because they're a bit complex and I'm trying to simplify but we'll go around there like that I think I won't take any dark brown into the main bit of the fish. It's going to be a little bit different to what I saw. Now I'm going to go for a more orangey brown colour, which I, again I'm going to have to sharpen. So as I say, it's not going to be quite so relaxing. Although I have to say, I do find the um, sound of the sharpener quite nice, but... It's a quite personal taste, isn't it? So I'm going to go over the top of that dark brown with this lighter, more orangey brown and just bring it, extend it really. It's just nice and simple. It was quite interesting just now. I um, YouTube had recommended a video. They have... um a YouTube channel called YouTube Creators to give you hints and tips as a creator on how to 
um, do different things. It's, it's quite random, different things. And this one was on how to be have more produce more videos without um, without making your quality worse, you know. And it was really quite interesting because all the tips were things that I already do. So uh, I'll share them with you in case you are a maker or I'm going for the um, blood orange. I don't know if I showed you what the last colour was. Did I show you it was the sienna brown? I can't remember. So we're going for blood orange. We've got a bit of a jumping colour now but I think it'll work. This one doesn't seem to be sharpening properly. I'm wondering if there's a lead in here. Yeah, there shouldn't be. That's better. We're getting there. It's still not quite there, sorry. Um, so the first sort of tip was it's not going to go really sharp. I don't know why. The first sort of tip was about making your videos um, in a row. So don't make one, edit it, put it up. Make another one, edit it, put it up. Make a batch and then edit them as a batch and put them up as a batch. That's exactly what I do. So here, I tend to, when I'm in the mood for recording, I just record, record, record until my um, voice runs out. And then I do my editing in a batch and I find that's much better and then you're in editing mood and it seems more efficient and that's exactly the point he was making and um, what else did he say schedule them in advance that's exactly what I do too so when I have lots of time I'm gonna finish that off like that I think um, when I have time I make extra and then schedule them so that they go up um, later and uh, I can't remember it oh he said have your setup so that it's always ready hence my recording room is now here my tripod is always set up um, which helps me um, I don't have all the right pencils and things already it depends what I'm using but uh, there are oh wow that's quite vibrant I just looked in the camera Ooh. <laughs> Now the edge of the fish, we'll, we'll do in a lighter um, orange, um, just having a look, I think this um, orange is the best one, again I'm going to have to sharpen. And I'm going to go around the body of the fish. In fact, I might just go over the top of this fin a little bit with this one. Because we've got a bit of white showing through. I'm just going to sort of burnish or glaze. My husband calls it glazing when he does a layer on top with his watercolour. I don't know whether... Whoops! Out of the line she goes. <laughs> I don't know whether there's a... Um, whether it's a technical term, he reads lots of art books, watch lo watches lots of art videos, does all that sort of studying stuff. Whereas, although I do watch some videos, I like to see what other people are up to and enjoy, you know, looking at what books are available and what techniques people are using and things like that. Um, I don't watch... Um, he... I don't watch like colour pencil artists, I always watch colourists and I think as colourists we have our own sort of style and way of doing things which is a bit different to tradition, I think. I'm going to use the Tuscan Sun next, again I need to sharpen. Next time I will sharpen all my pencils before I start the video. I think that would be a bit more efficient, wouldn't it? Um, but um, he uses all these technical terms and I don't know whether they're the proper terms. I don't think it matters. I just say what I mean <laughs> and hope people get it. <laughs> so we're getting towards 
the yellow. I feel that the transition between this orange and yellow, particularly here, isn't very good. I'm going to redo that in a minute. I'll try and reduce that a bit. I'm just going to so I'm going to go back in with the um, orange and just try and blend that in a bit better. Okay, let's go this sweet. It's quite bitty. It's very vibrant, isn't it? Um, now I need a yellow. I don't need to sharpen this one so much. I'm going to use the sunflower yellow. I'm not going to sharpen it. Just to finish off, and I'll go over all of it. As I say, I call it a burnish. He would call it a glaze. Now we've got the eye to do. Um, I do the centre black. It's called noir, very posh oh, French word. There we go. Now I don't like leaving that a bit white. I think it looks a little bit strange. <laughs> I don't know about you. Um, I want a sort of cold grey colour. Uh, I think the elephant grey is the cold grey. I'm going to have to sharpen this one though. It's too blunt. There we go. So elephant grey, and I'm going to do. You see me do fish before, I'm sure. A bit of grey there and there, so quite a lot here and here. And then fade it up in and down. So we've got some white. Then it looks slightly shiny. That's how I like my eye. So there's our fish. And now we're going to move on to the plants. Um, <clears throat> let's have a look. We've got a, we've got the, I've got my greens separated into more leaf greens and olive greens and bluey greens. Um, I think the bluey greens are quite nice for sort of underwater type design. So I'm going to use those. I've got the sort of turquoise, jade, shamrock, azure, and emerald. I think I'll start with the emerald green again. I'm going to have to sharpen it. There we go. Now, I'm going to do every piece of greenery. So, including this little bit at the bottom, I can't quite fit it all in. Hang on. There we go. Hopefully, we're all in shot. So, let's start just here. So, I'm going to put a little bit of this dark green at the bottom. And then just try and fade it. It's quite tricky. That bit, I don't think is grass. I think it's something to do with the coral and shell. So, I'm going to ignore that. Uh, and just con it's taking a little bit of concentration. Now I can certainly see why this page could be quite daunting. Now with pages like this, the best thing I think to do. Uh, is to approach each little bit one at a time. So I'm doing this singular fish and I'm not worrying about the rest of the double page. It's a double page as well, isn't it? So it feels huge, but I'm just doing the fish and it's greenery. And see, are those part of the fish or are they grass behind the fish? I think they're part of the fish. I'm going to do them as part of the fish in a minute. So we'll do that. I'll think about what colour. I could go for the really dark brown colour. It's a really simple technique, you know how I do these things if you've watched me before. I'm sure most of you have. So just colouring the bottom, like having less colour up at the top. Now although that one I said I think that's growing, I think this is just grass. Seagrass? 
because it's coming out from behind several different ones. Undo this one. Now, I'm trying to decide whether I might keep the same green across the whole of the page. I could keep the same limited colour palette across the whole of the page, but I don't know if I want my fish, my jellyfish and my seahorse to all be the same colour. It might get a bit boring. Um, I'm just checking to make sure I've done all of that, which I have. Sorry. Why does my nose always run when I'm colouring on video? I do not know. Okay, we're going to use the shamrock green for our lighter green. Again, I'm going to have to just sharpen it. It's one of those pages where sharpening is going to have to happen a lot. And I hope that the sharpening noise is actually soothing. I think it is. Shamrock green. And I'm just going to finish these off. It's quite a nice bluey green, which I think is nice for this design. I'm wondering whether I might do all the leaves and coral with the same colours and just change the animal because then we've just got the main star or key element, which is the animal standing out from the, uh, from the rest. But I will ponder that a little longer. I'm not sure what that is. I'm going to look in a different picture down here because this is also the fish and it hasn't got the pocket watch so I can work it out. I think it's the stem of that one. So I'm going to colour it in. Now I'm going to make the pocket watch really easy because it's small. And I'll show you that last because, yeah, I'll keep you in suspense. You'll have to wait. <laughs> I am mean. Make you wait. Make you watch it all. <laughs> Are you hoping? I'm hoping you might be colouring along. Even it all colouring something. You don't have to colour the same as me. And I think it's always nice if, if you're colouring something. Now we have these little bubbles in the water, um, which are interesting. I've given some thought to those actually when I was next door prepping. My son's here today, he's doing some chemistry reading. And uh, he, um, I said to him, I'm going to go and record, but I'll probably be back in a second because I would have forgotten something. I went through, came through here, shut all the doors, which I'd have to do when people are here. I don't when I'm on my own. And uh, came straight back in, having forgotten my notebook, which I used to write down all the colours I've used, because um, obviously, um, well, what I do is, because I record several videos in a row, I uh, have to write down the colours that I've used, so that I can put pop them in the description of the video for you, so you can see them if you want to prep beforehand and get your pencil sharp and ready or whatever and uh, right um, these um, yeah <laughs> whatever <laughs> I'm going to do sienna brown a little bit at the bottom fade it a bit and then the um, blood orange to finish it off yeah, so I so uh, I think he didn't even laugh. I think he he just knew. <laughs> yeah, mother's going back. <laughs> okay, I'm going to try and erase a few um, bits where I've gone out of the lines, just because um, I'm going to do a little bit of a background in a bit. Spoiler alert, and so uh, I want it clean, but I'm not going to worry too much. Now we have this sort of stones coral shells area now i often do those in sort of peachy peachy colors um i don't really know why um i'm just having a look at what we've got in this set we have got a color called coral so that's quite tempting to use this um it's a sort of peachy pink um 
orange. I don't know if it's a little bit close to the colour of the fish, but maybe that won't matter because it'll be paler. I think, should I use it? I think I use it first on everything and then I'll decide what other colour I think is going to work best with it. Now, I haven't swatched these pencils out. Yes, I have. I think I swatched them in my swatch. I'm not sure which one goes best with the coral. So here he is, coral. So I'm going to go over all the... Now this, um, I'm just checking. So these dots are all the chain of the pocket watch. So we'll ignore those for now. As I say, I've got a plan for that later. I think we'll just colour the coral in plain. And then we'll get a darker colour. As I say, I have swatched these, but I can't remember. We want to... Ooh! That's the first time that has happened with any pencil that I've sharpened with this sharpener. Normally, um, they don't break off like that, but it's okay. Let's just sweep that bit away. You'll be trying to sweep it off your phone. I know I would. <laughs> so I'm going to try and get a fairly even colour, which is not always that easy but I'll do my best it's all I can do and have fun that's the thing if it stops being fun then do something different and you know coloring should be fun I know there are people that get a little bit anxious about choosing the right colors um, what picture to choose getting it looking just perfect and that isn't what it should be about it should just be about relaxing fun. We're all at different levels. We're all improving all the time. The more we practice, that's all we need to concentrate on. Now, it's very, you know, as a creator, I guess is the title of YouTuber, it's so easy to get a little bit bogged down with looking at people who are brilliant and getting imposter syndrome thinking wow they're so much better than I am and I'm trying to teach people but I have to give myself a stern talking to and remember that I'm gonna just sharpen remember that I'm not here to teach you perfection I also don't want to daunt you, passion fruit red, by doing things that you feel that you couldn't achieve. Um, there's no chance of that because I'm not that amazing artist that's been doing perfect art since they were three. But I have to remember that, that, you know, you're here to have fun, to learn some basics, not to learn to produce a, a huge masterpiece if you were that good you wouldn't be watching me you would be making your own videos <laughs> or um, or making a career out of being an artist so uh, I just want to show you some simple techniques to hopefully help you have more fun I'm sort of going around the edge really with this just to add some light and shade you know, just to make it look a little more um, interesting, I suppose. You can just keep it in one colour, but it looks, I feel it looks a little bit flat. So to just add another colour around the edge just lifts it. This I'm trying not to make it too dark because obviously the fish is our star of the show. But I feel that because this is a big block of the same colour, it doesn't stand out as much as this fish which is the plan and then around the edge it's just nice and simple and I think I might do the same on the others and just change the colour of the main animal that's what I'm thinking at the moment so that then throughout the whole page it'll be the main animal that really stands out okay i do want to do a little bit of blue water 
in the background quite lightly but I don't want to do it down here now we do have bubbles here but I don't want to do it on the whole page it's going to be too daunting for me so I just want to do a little bit around here just so the bubbles stand out so I'm just going to pick a colour now we have an Aegean blue we have an ocean blue I'm thinking maybe the ocean blue is almost just saying I'm the right colour so I'm going to sharpen the ocean blue Here he is, and uh, just do, I think he's quite greeny, so I'm going to be really light handed, just try and do a hint. It's quite a nice vibrant colour which means that I can be really light handed and it still shows up. Of course it's not going to cover where I've um, gone out of the lines, but I'm not going to worry about that. Now I'm going to colour over the... Um, bubbles because they're going oh that's the green bit isn't it hang on let me just double check that yeah so we'll use our emerald green and our shamrock green just to finish that sorry about that one just escape my notice. I think it's that I got a little bit worried about the watch chain. Sort of didn't think about it. So I want to sort of go around the edge to the edge a bit. Just lightly. Like that. It's really quite quick if you do it gently. Little circular movements. Just light and gentle. And what some people would do is probably do it slightly darker around the objects than in the middle. You can do that if you wish. For me that is getting a bit overly complex. I really want to keep this quite straightforward because of it being such a big page. I'm going to have to do this on every single one. So I don't want it to get too tricky. And I would definitely use this same colour for every um, little rounded design. Um, I'm gonna, not going to go around that one because we're not coming down here. So I'm just going to go across to here. You can hear these pencils are a little bit scratchy on this paper. But they work nicely. They go down well. But then I haven't found a pencil that doesn't go down well on Johanna's books. Although I gather the, um, the American paper is a little bit different. Um... I have um, got a US edition of um, Magical Jungle, which I've actually finished, I think. Yeah, I finished it. And uh, it was okay. The paper wasn't was different, but it wasn't any better or worse, I didn't think. I think her newer books are slightly smoother paper. People have said they're a bit slick, and so really soft pencils smudge a bit more. But um, I haven't... I haven't tried prismas or anything in them, so I don't really know whether it was that bad. I think also whether a pencil smudges or not can depend on how thickly you put it down. If you tend to be quite heavy-handed with your pencil, it's going to be more likely to smudge. So there we go. I'm just fiddling, trying to make it look fairly even without being too fussy. So it's a really gentle background it's just very quick and easy now I brought these pens in metallic shiny jelly rolls and it's what we're going to use for the bubbles and the pocket watch so I'm going to keep it really simple I'll do the pocket watch first this is the yellowest colour it's number 551 if you're interested it's just basically a gold metallic pen so you could use a gold coloured pencil if you wanted to I would suggest the yellow ochre if you're using your um, the, this set but I have decided to do this in pen now these are quite wet and sticky which I like you just have to be a little bit careful when you're applying them to uh, make sure 
you're aware of that. Now it's not working, just to, there we go. Sometimes you have to just hold it a little bit more upright. I don't know if it's going to be very good at showing me the individual dots. There we go. Now I'm going to leave the centre of the pocket watch white. I think that's just how I planned it really. Oops. And then we have this silvery one, which is number 553. So I have to bring it close to my face because I can't see. And we'll do the dots. Some post is just arrived. I shall go and investigate that in a minute. We'll finish this first. It won't take long. I don't want to stop. Now we're nearly there. Now, if you don't have um, a silver a pen, you could use a normal graphite. I don't know if they are graphite these days. Pencil, because they tend to be a bit shiny. Or you could just use a grey. Uh, um, the same grey we used for the eye would be a good grey, but obviously we've coloured over these, so most people would have a silver pen, but a white one could work as well. But there we go. I'm going to try and tip it so you can see the shine of the metallic pen. Hopefully you can. So there we go. There is our first um, little um, area. We're going to do um, the jellyfish and the seahorse. Um, I've rather sillily made it very wet, so when I do my jellyfish above, I can smudge it. Mm, I have to come up with a plan. <laughs> but anyway, thank you very much for watching, and do tune in tomorrow for the next one. Um, anyone who's a member, um, I will try and do a compilation of all three and put it in one video and release it to you early as a little member perk. But non-members will get to see them. All, all videos are available to everyone. Members just get early access um, just as a little perk for them, as a little thank you. But I don't want to deprive anybody of the content, so you do all get it. And you don't usually have to wait very long. Um, anyway, thank you for watching. I hope you have a really lovely day and happy colouring.